If I can look on a certain place, you can tear it there all night. Because the sun was set. He took of the stones of that place and took them for his pillars. Lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed. The whole of that set up on the earth, the top of it reached the heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the God, Lord God of Abraham, thy father, the God of Isaac, the man whereon thou lies. To thee will I give it, and to thy seed. Thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. I shall spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north, to the south, and in thee. And in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all the places where thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Jacob looked out of his sleep, and he said, Sure, the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. He was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place? This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. <coughs> Jacob rose up early in the morning with a stone that he put for his pillars and set it up for a pillar. He poured oil upon the top of it. He called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of that city was called Love at the first. Jacob vowed a vow saying, If God will be with me and will keep me this way, then I go and will give me bread to eat and rain to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God, and this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house, and of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tent. Unbelief. Read it correctly in the 10th verse through the 26th verse of the 28th chapter of the book of Genesis. May we pray. Dear God, our Father, tonight, we thank thee for Jesus Christ, our Savior. We thank thee for the Holy Ghost who lives within our bodies. The one who reveals the truths of thy word to us. The one who makes our groanings known unto thee. We thank thee that you are our Father and we are your children. And that because of that relationship you can talk to us. Amen. And we can talk to you without going through somebody else. We don't have to go through Mary or Hope or nobody else. We just come talk to you because you're our Father. We're your children. We're grateful for that. Our Father all through down through the carpets of time. You talk to me and they talk to you. You've not changed to the same today that you were then. So we're grateful that we have a right to talk to you. We come to ask you to forgive our sins tonight and blot out our transgressions that there'll be nothing between us and you. We come to ask you, God, that you'll take this service now and do through it what you want done in this night. Heaven, Father, I pray in Jesus' name tonight that you'll take thy servant and lose his tongue and illuminate his mind. Give us holy action. I pray you'll form us if it were a vacuum over this place and remove every demonic sit down and force out of here. Let yes. none but the power of the Holy Ghost move in this place. Yes. Heavenly Father, for Jesus' sake, would you do thy work tonight? Revive those of us that are saved and save those which are lost. Heavenly Father, we thank it for Jesus' sake tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Because there are some here tonight from other places. <coughs> to make what 
one announcement, and that is that our January Power Conference at Merlin has been changed. We follow the second Sunday in March. We will not have our January Power Conference at Merlin this year in January. It will be March the 13th through the 16th, which is Monday after the second Sunday. It will continue that time. We had to move it on the account of the energy crisis and so on. Uh, running in on us. We saw the weather going to be able to operate, so we just moved it up to a warmer month. We will not have a January conference this coming year, so please help us get the word around. But there will be no January, so people won't come then. But make your plans to be there in March. We plan one of the greatest meetings we've ever had in the history of the town. I hope you'll come. Now then, tonight, I want to call your attention to one other passage of Scripture in the book of Genesis, the 35th verse. God said unto Jacob, Arise and go up to Bethel and dwell there. And make that an offer unto God that appear to thee without blessing from the face of Esau thy brother. Jacob said unto his household, All that were with him. But array the strange gods in among you and be clean and change your gods. So let us arise and go up to Bethel and I will make an offer to God. Who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me the way which I went. He gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand, all their earrings which were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under the oak which was my sack. They journeyed and the terror of God was upon the city. Round about them. They did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. Arise and go up to Bethel. I want to come here tonight about back to Bethel. We have here a very interesting story, a very typical story, a very natural story, just as natural as free. Just as interesting today as it ever was. We have the story of Jacob and Esau. Jacob and Esau was an out to each other. And as a result, Jacob had a mess of pottage and Esau come along from the fields and he was extra hungry. He was a sportsman. He was a hunter of big game and he came in from the fields after a big hunt. He was very hungry, and as a result, he sold his chance of a birthright as a priesthood to, East, to Jacob, his brother, for a mess of pottage, one more to me. When he realized what had happened and the tricks that had been played on him between his, Jacob's mother and him, and that he'd been tricked out of the birthright as a priesthood, he saw the king very angry and went out to kill Jacob. He was headed out to destroy Jacob. He fully intended to got staggered and killed him. But as a result, Jacob outran him. And that wasn't accidental. Because you see, God had something planned way on down the road for Jacob. Amen. A lot of times we stand amazed how some people get through some narrow places. Never escapes of death and tragedy. But if we stop to realize God's got something planned for him, we're going down the road. Amen. And it's God's business to keep them alive Amen. and preserve them till this hour. We see that very spirit here. And so Jacob went out from Beersheba. He lighted upon a certain place and turned out all night because the sun was set. He took of the salt and made a pillow for his head and he's going to spin an iron. He had a dream that the whole of us set up on the earth. The top of it reached to heaven and the holy angel of God is sending, descending on it. The whole of the Lord stood above it and said, Now notice God's talking to Jacob. He said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, the God of Isaac, the land where all thou lies, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. What a statement. God talking to Jacob from up at the top of the ladder. And he said, Jacob, I want to tell you something. I am the Lord God of Abraham, my heart. 
and uh, the God of God and I, the land whereon thou art, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed for thee. God seeing it to it. God speaking it to it. The land that still I am on, I'm going to give this to you and give it to thy seed. It's the God of Abraham that's talking to you. It's the God of Isaac that's talking to you, Jacob. And thy seed shall be the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south, and in thee and in thy seed shall all the parents of the earth be blessed. What a covenant. What a promise. The ladies and gentlemen, God's never broken that promise. Amen. It's still true that it is and ever was. Because God's the same today that He was yesterday. And what God said, He said it before now that He don't have to go back and change it up and make it to suit today. Because when He said it, He knew what He said, He don't have to take it back or change it or modify it. And behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places where thou art born. Here's what I want you to get. Behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all the places where thou art born, and will bring thee back again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Hold a second. Do you see the picture in that? Behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all the places where thou art born. God sort out his soul that Jacob was going to stay back. God sort out his soul that Jacob was going to backslide and get out of this. But notice what he said. I will thee and will keep thee in all the places where the Lord goes, and will bring thee back, and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to the uh, what God is saying, Jacob, I know what you're fixing to do. You're not going to keep your vows you're fixing to make to me. You're going to get out of there and you're going to go to some other place. But I'm going to go after you. Mm -hmm. And so I'll bring you back here before I quit. Right. And I'll put you back on the spot before I'm through with you. Amen. And so my friends, you think I want you to realize tonight, some of you made vows to God and promised God that you'd be faithful to the church you identified yourself with. And you were wrong. The Lord added to the attitude of the church, and you don't have any right to subtract yourself. Right. Amen. 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 And take out on God and quit on God and run around with something. Right. Amen. But I want you to know God ain't going to leave you alone while you're out there. He said, I'm going out to me, and I'll bring you right back where you started. That's true. And my friends, you keep that in mind in this message tonight, will you please? God says, you're going to go to some other places. You're going to take out on this church. You're going to take out on me. You're going to run around to some other places. But I'm going to go with you. And you are going to where I will be when you get there. And when I get through with you, you come right back here when you pay these back mm -hmm. and get down to business with me. Right. And I'm going to bless the nations for you. Mm -hmm. And you keep that in mind as we're going to the message. Notice what Jacob said there. Jacob went out and sweet and said, Sure, the Lord is in this place, and I know it not. And I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place? This is none other but the house of God at this week in heaven. Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the straw that he put for his pillar and set that for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. He called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of the city was called Luz at the first. And Jacob bowed the house saying, If God will be with me, We'll keep him this way to the law. <coughs> we'll give him bread to eat, rain to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then 
shall the Lord be my God. And this song, which I set for a pillar, shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the king of the beast. Now let's get the picture. Here is the ladder and Jacob is looking up at the top of it and there it's gone. And God's talking to Jacob. And God tells him, there's no doubt in his mind who he is. I'm the God of Abraham and of Isaac. And I am going to bless thy seed. And you're going to go out to some places from here. And I'm going to go with thee. But I'm going to bring you back here. Mm. And I'll do what I'm going to do. Amen. Amen. And Jacob woke up, knowing talk with God. And God gave him some instruction. He said, Holy Spirit. My, this is some spirits I have. And he took a rock that he used, the stone that he used for his pillow the night before. And set it up. And pour oil on top of it. And said, I set up this place as a memorial to what has happened here. Where God appeared to me. And where God talked to me. And where God told me what he's going to do with me. And God promised to feed me and to clothe me. And to bring me back to my father's house in peace. And because you've done it, God, I'm going to call this place a house of God. Yeah. And I'm going to bring my tithe and put it in here for you. What a picture. So many things that's what Jacob did. He bowed down and said, God, if you bring, give it some to eat and some to wear, and a show it open. Bring it back around all his hands in peace. Then this shall be a place of house of God to his feet. I'll come here with you. I'll bring my time and put it here, God. Now nobody forced Jacob to make that vow. Nobody forced Jacob to make that statement. Neither did they force Jacob to seal it with oil. He sealed that vow with oil, as the scripture says. Let me read it to you and get it exactly. So it'll come again to my book. And this song which I have said for a pillar shall be God's house of all that thou shalt give me. I'll still give the tenth of thee. And as a result, Jacob bowed the vow and said, If God be with me and will keep me in the way his eyes are wrong, will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I come to the end of my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God. <laughs> and back in the 18th verse, Jacob rose up early in the morning, took the stone that he put for his parents, set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it to call the name of the place Bethlehem. He said about our God and he sealed it with oil, which makes it doubly obligatory. Mm. He probably hit it not because he got all the way to that seal. Right. Amen. With oil. So the fact that Jacob soon gets away from God, he gets with his uncle Leon. Uncle Leon is a traitor, is a traitor. He goes over and spends some time with his uncle. He gets to traffic and trade with Uncle Leon. And they traffic and trade, and he forgets to go back to Bethlehem to worship. He forgets to take care of how he's made to God and steal the water. He forgets all of that. He becomes a traitor. He becomes a trickster. He becomes a thief. He becomes a deceiver. He's become a liar. He's lying to God. He hasn't done what he told God to do. Yes, amen. He's so human. He's so happy like most of us have been through our lives. So after a long my dear friends, the Lord foresaw that Egypt. He said, wherever you go, Jacob, I'm going with you. Yes, amen. And I'm going to be out of here. And when I bring you back to this place, you can send it. Amen. Amen. So, my friends, it took God almost a hundred years 
command him what he wants to be. He does all of this wonder. He does all of this getting out of God's will. He goes all the time. But God finally brings him back to that. Because God said that's what he's going to do. Amen. And so after his thought, the real word of the old Jacob had never come out of him until the very sunset of his life. <laughs> He spent it when he wasted most of his life. He sent it away from God out of the will of God. Most of his life. And so, my friends, the devil does the same thing to most people. Most people waste their life, and the best years of their life is spent with the devil out of the will of God, out of the purpose of God. The devil comes along and says to the Young people, well, you don't want to get serious and get God in your heart. Young people have so the right walls. No, you don't. Right. But there's something you do have to do. If your soul wild walls, it's really wild walls. Amen. They call them slack and they get slack. You don't plant tears and get cold. Right. Amen. You don't sow weed and get beans. Right. And you don't sow the flesh and not get corruption. Amen. Amen. You sow the spirit and it's spiritual things. So after this art, he says to the young people, and they believe that they go out and live a rebellious and a stubborn life, then they come to the age of marriage. And they get married. And the devil said, now you've got to get settled in your home before you get started to church. You've got a home to establish. You've got to get established. Y'all are going to get with each other and so on. Just one more church now. By and by, baby comes in the home that the devil said, Look, you can't afford to take that old baby in there. He'll cry and disturb the people. And I know they got a nursery, but you don't want to put your baby down there with a bunch of strangers. Leave it. You're going to start to smudge you up this way until it grows up. And by that time, it's grown up out of the church and it's a need. You can't take it to church. That's right. And then you say, well, then we go to church, but our kids cut up and embarrass us, and we can't afford it. Well, the devil sold you another bill of goods. And then they didn't long until they had grown up and so soon they go off in business and marry and so on. And then you say, well, we can't afford to leave all the children to come home this weekend. And we can't afford to leave home because the children will be here. And that's the only time they come, so we've got to stay home with them. So that is so it's another bit of goods. <laughs> and then a lot of time the children get, start coming home, so the grandchildren come home. Then the devil has your dick set for your grandchildren, so you're young, you run around with the world of the devil. He still got some. Yeah. And time they get big enough, then you get old enough to retire. And the devil said, look, you better work day and night and build up a mess day. You don't have to retire for long. And you won't have no retirement. You better lay with that work and you don't have time to go to church. By the time you get retired, then the devil says, you see, you're so bad. You got so many aches and pains and aches and nerves. And so you can't go to church. And that's why the devil said, you out of church all your life. That's right. That's right. Amen. 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 And if you are listen to the he'll save you the same day the Lord. Amen. He'll let you be the same day if you listen to him. Amen. Amen. That's what he said for him. It's to defeat him. So after his thought, old Jacob left God out and went over with his uncle Liam. And the devil could run to fight. My friends. Away from God, and leave his God out, and get it to his uncle, and they tried and trade and leave God out. He's forgot about them. He's left out. He's with his uncle now. He's traveling and trading and making money and getting cattle and doing other things. But the stone's still there. And the steel bow is still there. Uh, yeah. And God still acts. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He had no more God in God. Amen. And he walked. And while he says, he's going to bring him back. See that trouble in the message. But here's what I want you to see. Esau was angry. Esau's fishing him. He's running for his life. 
Let no man put a thunder. Amen. And he puts his seal upon his senses. That dismiss. You mad, right? You go out of this house married to that woman. Married to that man. Legally, lawfully, and pronounce that you can be that way till death alone is a separate check. Right. You ought to get into that town. You ought to get into each other. And you have no right to run around with other women. Amen. 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 You know, prophets before the law was there and the law was in the attitude for saying all of us, we need to do it. You all did it. All right, that's exactly what you've done spiritually. Right. You come down the aisle and pass that what you come with. All follow the Lord and baptism. Are you willing to take the things of the world and place the world? You know, the world and things of the world and place the world to follow the Lord and baptism and live again? I will. Pastor said, what's the desire of the church? Some brother said, I make a motion. Another said, I second the motion. The church votes and gives him the legal authority to perform the ceremony. Mm. And he goes up into baptismal waters, set upon the provision of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I baptize you, my brother or sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. by the authority of the heavenly Baptist Church. Amen. Seals open. You came out of those baptismal waters married to the Lord Jesus. Amen. The bride of Christ. Amen. Amen. He's the bridegroom. And you have the water to run around with. You have the water to run around with the world and places and where the things of the world. Right? You married to Jesus. Amen. He's not sitting out on you. He's not committing the spirit to the government. And God bless your soul, you have the life to believe her. Amen. 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 You're a You get out and start running around in the world, you're an adulterer. Amen. Amen. An adulteress. See? It means you went and girls who said you're saved and took the vows and secret from the baptism ones and came out married to Christ. If you run around in the world, fool with the earth, then you're the enemy of God. And you're an adulteress. Amen. You're living in the spirit of the Lord. Amen. You're living against Christ. And Christ is the bridegroom. And God is the father-in-law. And you're going to have trouble with both of them as long as you're running around the world and getting in this from God. Amen. 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 Let's face reality tonight. I have an idea. I'm good on it. Oh, Jacob was too, but God fought me. Amen. Amen. Right. God fought you. Right. And when He gets you where He wants you, He don't want you to where you be yourselves. Amen. Right. You see? You see, He said, Jacob, you go to the places, but I'm going with you. And I'll bring you back here. Now, you see, when the devil tells you, you try to make hell, you promise to all kinds of things. And when God says you, you should try to live a you come and told the church, I'll give the world and face the world with God, and I'll be part of the bride of Christ, I'll be a part of this church. And the Lord added to the church, they mm-hmm. such a sin. Amen. Now listen, he didn't have to take you. But Ronnie Simpson didn't have to marry Francis. He could have found another girl that had him. But there's something about her that he liked and he married her. And he's glad. But he could have married somebody else instead of Francis. You see, there's millions of people traveling through this world. The Lord didn't have to pick you and add you to the church. He could have picked one of the other millions. <laughs> but there was something about you that he liked. Amen. Some of our children repeated to him. And when he had a Holy Ghost to feel, he responded to his loving. And he said, I want you to be a part of my church. <laughs> and the Lord added to the church, say it such as a say. Now, when the Lord moved on you to join this church and be added to this church, that was the Lord's business. Amen. He said, the Lord didn't have you, I just 
Because if God won't let you get by then He's your respect of us. He lets you get by the bunch of junk and well, let me get by them things I'm hoping me and tear me up. Let you go that he showed partiality. And he can't do it. He's God. Amen. Amen. Oh, I know you think he's my, but wait a minute, don't take it before he's getting by too. Amen. We'll see about a little later. All right? While he's away from God, away from battle, there's some things that he lost. First of all, he lost his fellowship with God. God won't fellowship the world. God won't fellowship sin. God's holy. Amen. God's righteous. And he ain't going to fellowship you in your sins. Amen. Amen. He can't. He can't sense in your sins. He can't play with your sins. He can't indulge in your sins. He's holy. He's righteous. And God cannot censor your smile. Thank <laughs> you. 